Hello, this is Matt with some brief words before episode three of Duocast with Nick and I begin. Now today, with this episode, Nick and I kind of want to focus on the important concept and topic of information, specifically its evolution throughout this new technological revolution humanity has been seeing since the birth of the internet. Now, we kind of first want to talk about its progression through society, but also how it's kind of become this new type of monetary system in terms of accruing mass data sets pretty much improves companies' income. and They um, are able to grow faster and acquire more money. Because if, a say, a big corporation such as Amazon has a lot of information on their consumers, they can then um, pretty much target them much easier knowing the products they like, which then um, progresses into pretty much accurately predicting what their consumers will want to buy before they actually buy it, which then will lead into the topic of privacy. How are these big corporations getting our information? How are they, what are they using it for? And this then leads into the question of, are our own interests, our own opinions, our own choices, are they based around our own agency or is it much bleaker? Are we influenced heavily by what is now um, these advertising campaigns we see constantly on social media, television, on the internet? Um, Are these algorithms used by Twitter, social media, YouTube, Instagram? Do they influence do they influence us heavily or do we still have the ability to choose freely? All these topics and these um, questions will be discussed in today's episode. And obviously this is a very huge topic, huge questions being asked. So um, there, there will probably be a part two of this um, specific topic of information. Now, with that being said, we hope you enjoy this episode. Let's begin. Welcome, everybody, to the third duo cast between uh, Nick and Matt. So today we actually have a very, very interesting topic here. Um, we're going to be talking about tech, big data, and also personal data, and kind of the evolution of this and what we see happening in the future. This is a very load question that I know Matt is very excited to talk about. So how are you doing today, Matt? I'm good. How are you yourself, Nick? I'm doing great. So I think where I want to start is maybe just... Since, like, we've had a lot of, like, recent events, right, happen with, you know, Facebook, for example, um, you know, they are being called to Congress repeatedly for, you know, personal data leakage or, um, you know, different, different things surrounding that and also, like, personal rights, like, because, you know, whenever, whenever the U.S. Constitution was made, right, we didn't have any sort of data, right, so there's, like, there's this sort of freedom of speech Um, you know, that, that plays part into it, but also like, um, personal security and also, you know, privacy, like those are huge, huge things that, you know, used to be, um, very easy to solve, but now it's very complex. Like even in Europe, they're having to, you know, create different laws and they're also having to talk with corporations. So we see like a stronger government control. So there's like a lot of different areas we could go with this that we could talk about today. Um, but, you know, maybe you, you should start off on your initial thoughts. So, like you said before, this is a huge, broad topic, and it, it's a very important one um, since we are at the beginning of um, this new revolution, so to speak. Um, and I think the, the best way to kind of start this discussion is to go back to the origin, so to speak, of the birth of the internet and I believe it was like the 1970s or 1980s, um, because that's pretty much where the um, access to huge data sets and being able to communicate with people across the globe kind of was born, um, and this pretty much transitioned humanity into the world of the ab- abstraction rather than actually just being in the real world. And like you said with the Constitution, um, freedom of speech, and also having like security and stuff like that, I think that the Constitution is really good in terms of real conflict or just real interactions but when it comes to stuff like you said the internet and um, data 
online, it has really no understanding of that. It has no like actual like um, laws that can really relate to what we're go what's going on right now, and that's where all these conflicts with Facebook and all the and Twitter with Congress and stuff like that is happening. Um, so that's that's pretty much I think where we should start. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see that like if you look at like. Um, it's called the Internet of Things. IoT is the abbreviation. Mm. Um, but this is something you can look up. And the, the Internet of Things, from my understanding, is just, like, the amount of overall connections that the world has. Like, um, it's basically just, like, what is the Internet? Like, what was the capacity and what's been the growth? Like, what are total connected devices? Like, whether it be, like, different servers, you know, new mobile devices whatsoever. But... It's basically like a broad measurement. Um, And this is something that can actually be looked at and charted. And so I know I've looked at this when I was looking at different tech companies. Like, Mm -hmm. what is the market they're operating in? What is the growth rate? So um, it's just incredible to see that this is an extremely exponential curve, right? Like, we saw it start out very flat with gradual growth. People didn't really know where it was going to go. Like you said, when we first had, you know, the first connection and the first computer... You know, then we start having, you know, commercial computers that can be sold. Mm -hmm. Um, And, like, we had the first iPod, right? Like, this all happened, like, you know, before the 2000s. And then, you know, we had the dot-com bubble in the 2000s. And you could just see this curve just just explode, right? Just every year, things get more efficient, more... um, can, can, Can hold more capacity, more data. So, it's just cool to look at that. Um... But at the same time, you can also see, like, the level of, like, personal data being stored. And I think the tipping point for me was the creation of the cloud. Mm. Like, what is the cloud, right? (laughs) Nobody, like, ever, I feel like people talk about it, but they don't actually understand, like, what it is. But it's, like, it's so interesting. And the creation of the cloud is, like, just took us, like, just jumped us ahead and like what could be possible right Mm -hmm. like now you can store enormous amount of you know files and data in this abstract you know quote-unquote cloud like it was it's just up there you know in space you know not really but it's just you can't see it but it's there and you can download it onto a hard drive and you know in in a snap of a finger so um but having the cloud and then having that long term storage opportunity mm-hmm. has created a lot of problems. It's done a lot of good but also created a lot of problems. Um so, you know, I don't know what the future of the cloud will be, but you know, I think it's gonna be utilized more. Yeah, I definitely agree. And going back to just like the the amount of power the cloud gives someone, I mean it 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 takes finite amounts of bits. And transforms them into almost infinite amount of bits. So like you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can you can gather as much data as you want that can fit into the cloud. So I mean like the cloud is almost infinite, like you said in our second duo cast. Um, and that just like the opportunity of like say a company, like that that just that just gives them so much more more, more opportunity to make more money to um, interact with their customers or consumers and to gather more data on their customers and consumers, which springboards them to make more money Mm -hmm. so like the clouds are really huge stepping stone but i agree with you also like that brings that brings issues because these companies then are taking data from the customers that people may not be aware of um or that they might not know and it's it's kind of taking away their privacy in a way and also um there's definitely issues that come up with that as well what's What's crazy to me, and I, I want to hear like what you have to say about this too, because I feel like everyone's had this experience where they like, where they talk with their mom like, hey, I might need like a new pair of sneakers, right? And then you open up a social media app of some sort, mm-hmm. like for example, me like if I go talk about something and then I go to do a Quizlet for my exam the next day, on the side I will have <laughs> what like. The weirdest thing that happened to me was, I know I was researching different companies, you know, for possible internships, Mm -hmm. and every day, whatever company I was looking at that day, they had an ad on the side of Quizlet, which was so weird to me. Um, It's a very bizarre experience. It's very bizarre, and almost like, 
um, unreal. It's like surreal. You don't know like how that ever happened because you, it was just a conversation you had. Yeah. Obviously, the conversation you might not have thought about it, but you know, obviously, I was googling things. You know, looking up, going to websites. Mm -hmm. So, it's crazy that things get stored that quickly, like yeah. within a matter of minutes, they have your search and they will sell. You know, they will sell or. Yeah, so they will sell your your search history to different companies and they will have contracts with those companies to, you know, send send this information to them and they can use that to, for target market advertising. But it's also crazy to think about certain things like, you know, the Alexas and the Google, Google Homes and how they will actually, you know, listen to your conversations and keywords will be, you know, captured um, and, you know, they will put in the company's database. For example, Google will start advertising on your different connected accounts with that Google Home, for example. Um, obviously, there was a lot of you know scrutiny over this, and so you know people stopped buying them or would shut them off um, or even get you know talk to Google specifically about this. So, um, but it's just crazy that the amount of like leeway and also these companies, big tech companies, are like getting into our houses, like getting into our lives. Um, and they're, it, they're, they're affecting us. And yes, maybe I'm getting some of the advertisements that I would want to see. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you just, I just feel like I have almost no privacy, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with that and kind of like stepping back just a little bit. Um, these companies, they have so much money. They have so much, um, like power in terms of their outreach, they get, they have probably immense like algorithms, data sets to just even know what you're gonna want to be interested in. And um, so that that's one subset of that. So like for example, like your search history, they sell that to other companies and they already know pr pretty much what you're gonna want to buy maybe in like a week, just based on like what you're searching or what um, types of accounts you follow on a given social media platform and like, that's scary, but at the same time, like that's that's public knowledge essentially. But whenever you're in the realm of, say, an Alexa or a Google Home listening to what the giving words you're saying, so for example, if I if I say to my mom, oh, I could go for Pizza Hut um, tonight, or like so something that I'm I'm interested in buying this evening, I mean, that that keyword could trigger the Alexa to turn on and listen, record that. And then they could sell that specific data to say Pizza Hut or like a, a, another chain, another big corporation. And mm -hmm. we, we can go off this later, but there's a rift I want to talk about, which this may seem this might seem creepy, but I think it's because it's in the essence of the type of economic model we live in right now and how these corporations, their essential goal is to just have you buy their products rather than them looking out for you. They're not looking out for you. They're looking out for your wallets. They're looking out for the money they can get from you. And if we would say with these big corporations, say they're they were, um, looking out for you in terms of your health, and Alexa would listen to, say, like um, a distress call that you had some broken or say like you fell and it heard a loud noise, it would call like the, an ambulance or something. So like in regards to that, that's beneficial, but them actually listening to conversation in terms of like consumer and buying stuff, that's I don't like that at all. Yeah. I think it's it's really hard to like regulate this. Mm -hmm. And that's why like, you know, obviously there's no answers because it's like it's literally like at this moment in time when we're doing this podcast, like there's people trying to think about this and discussing mm -hmm. this and trying to create like laws around this, like, you know, um, you know, data protection laws and such because it's there's a lot of benefits and they don't want to they don't want to crowd out all the benefits like you said like you know distress people like you know it's sometimes hard to like type in a number if the current situation is an emergency but it might be very easy to quickly say like call 911 you know to you know some sort of device like an AI AI device the kind of the Alexa Google Home systems but um, you know it's hard it's hard to determine whether you know is this the the way that the society is moving towards like is this capitalism forcing these businesses to try to find like competitive edges you know where they're almost in our houses and mm -hmm. like within the you know a quick second they can get that advertising information or they can get whatever information they're looking for and sell that like is that the way we're moving where the market is so like efficient and like competitive that that's the direction it needs to go 
Because I think, like, um, if that's the way, it could become an issue. You know, mm-hmm. there could become where, you know, there's almost, we have almost no privacy to the fact where these corporations are getting away with, you know, like, you know, holding and selling really important um, data. And, like, another thing that worries me is not so, like, we haven't really had a ton of issues right now, you know, with, with that. Um, there's concerns, and I know the concerns are floating around. What worries me the most is what's already happened with, um, like, we have a certain, like, break, um, like, hacking instances, like, with Facebook, but also, like, remember Target? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Target, right? They had a bunch of, like, credit cards stolen and stuff. It's like, you know, you want to be able to hold, you know, customer and account history, but I don't think companies are willing to pay or take the extra step to protect mm-hmm. its, its consumers. Because, for example, people stop shopping at Target um, for a decent decent amount of time just because they were afraid that they would get their credit card stolen. Even if they say, you know, for like on a public relations base, if they're like, you know, we're all good, right? You can shop mm-hmm. with us. We've, we've determined the breakthrough and eliminated the issue. But you never really know. There could still be a weak point. And so that's like devastating for a company to have that happen. Yeah. But at the same time, holding that data is almost essential. So, I'm curious, you know, your thoughts on that, like, the, the different compare and contrasts of holding consumer data, but also the, the huge causes for concern there. Yeah, so, um, before we get into that, I just want, so you brought Target with, like, um, hacking and stuff like that. There's a really recent um, Twitter user that went into the master key of Twitter and got, like, information on a bunch of people. Yeah, there's a ton like of that, stuff that like that. just happened. TikTok, yeah. I guess, is a... I guess there's concerns even, with like you know yeah they, they're personal. taking people information since they're a China based company all this type of stuff but it definitely comes down to um, the game between the people holding the information and then the people that need that information that can't get it um, so I mean th- I mean this gets into the conversation of data and information is now becoming the new gold or the new um, like most lucrative um, commodity to have in terms of gaining freedom, gaining power, because if you say, if you know my interests in terms of what I want to buy, my demographic, my, like what I purchased in the past, you can mold my behavior to buy more of what you're selling to me. And that is very powerful. That's very efficient. And anyone in a capitalist society wants that. And this comes back to target. I mean, if say, uh, I don't know, um, Dick Sporting Goods or some other type of um, similar store or company is competing with them. They could they could have a hacking war or something to um, to hurt Target's image so that they can then um, focus more on their own company to um, make more money or something. Um, so it it's definitely going to get more interesting in the future with these companies if we continue to go down the road the road we're going because uh, they're going to want more information but then at the same time I feel like there'll be more data hacks because that's what these companies and these people are going to be more focused on yeah um, so yeah so I think something that like needs to be probably mandated by the government is like there needs to be you know I'm not sure what it is but there probably needs to be a certain level of protection that mm-hmm. each company has you know has met and there needs to be some way to check this you know i'm no you know computer science major or anything so i can't i won't understand that but i know it needs to exist just from what i've seen is you know if you have these companies but even like startup companies that grow big like uber for example like uber wasn't a it like people don't really think about it but uber became a thing just a couple years ago like it grew exponentially um, and covered a, you know, a wide market. So like, but that's not the, I can guarantee that's not the last startup to ever occur, right? There's going to be more and more that find a niche that hasn't been met and will, you know, attack it, you know? And, but even like a company like Uber, for example, has a ton of information, right? Like we've all put our credit cards into that app. Yeah. We've all put our names, our addresses. Um, they have past locations that we've traveled to, which is, maybe even more creepy than what you've just Googled, right? Because they know specific locations. Like, you could, you know, you could be tracked, and, you know? So it's just, like, something like that. And 
I, you know, nothing against Uber. I, 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 it's a great company that might be, you know, very secure, but, you know, a, a new startup that hasn't fully taken into account like this, or maybe they're focused on other instances and haven't fully developed like a full security team or something like that, that could lead a major risk. Um, and if a giant corporation like Facebook or Target can be hacked, um, or Twitter, for example, can be mined and even like there's certain gaming companies that have had you know that have a ton of info and that people are able to like strip the source code out of those games and like destroy games and you know put Microsoft or like Valve like back on back on their feet like trying to scramble to protect this um you know I I think something needs something like that needs to exist and that like if a company is going to be holding in any sort of data there should be like Mm -hmm. checks on it and so I could see a new, like, government, you know, system or group, like, up here that could be, like, in the future just focused completely on data. Yeah. You know, kind of like a homeland security, but for, for tech. Um, I, I completely agree with you. And I honestly think that, um, kind of going back to, like, the Constitution um, discussion, mm-hmm. I think that there's going to be needed to have, to be made a similar document of some sort that is able to um, guide and um, kind of just manage all of what's happening right now because I mean this is completely unprecedented this is completely novel this is completely new and um, something something bad's gonna happen I mean like bad things have already happened but in which the magnitude of the next um, hack war the next um, violent like uh, information um, any, any, the next information that's taken from, say, whatever company, it's definitely be much worse than the previous um, instance. So I definitely think the government governments need to come together. These there, there needs to be more discussion about it, um, and people need to be more aware of what's happening. Yeah, I also think it's interesting to see like we even have like instances of countries hacking other countries. Um, it just shows like the importance of data on that aspect. If you can have like full countries like going out of their way to you know possibly break relationship ties to hack you know another country and get and gain their data mm-hmm. um just to get a leg up on just to get a leg up on them you know because that's how the world that's how the world is is starting to push towards right like you know nobody's saying it happened but there's a chance that maybe russia was ha- hacking elections or mm-hmm. maybe china with national security with like tiktok or something like that you know you're not sure we're not sure if it, it happened but the the after effect that if it was true and no precautions were taken could be like really detrimental de- detrimental so um it's interesting to see that like there's even it's even pushing towards like that aspect where whole whole nations are fighting over you know data fighting over certain technology yeah so and this kind of gives gets into the question of are my interests do I what is what the things I enjoy are they actually my own original thought because for example if the US and say Russia are are able to manipulate the data in which people um, choose or vote for like Trump or Hillary um, I'm not really sure how like so with the Russian hack 2016 election I'm not really exactly sure how they would have done that but like they could have say um manipulate advertising companies for people to vote more for Trump rather than Hillary or they could just completely manipulate the whole like um, voting system in general so I'm not really sure how it happened but when it comes when it ha- when you have like these state um, officials like having intentions on manipulating data it's very easy for them to then um, have these corporations then to manipulate consumers into like doing whatever they want you to do mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. A, uh, I guess a good example is iPhones. Like, so why? So like, w- with the whole like iPhone upgrades, like they're upgrading one specific thing. So like, for example, they just upgraded the camera, and like, I-, I wouldn't really say it's a good upgrade, but the phone itself got even more expensive. So then, like, why are people buying those more expensive phones? So, well, it's because that they're being like persuaded to doing it through all this advertising thing, all this advertising like campaigns, all of this stuff to kind of just mold people's interests into one narrow camp um, mm. to like buy that specific product. Yeah. And I mean, that's good. that's kind of a big generalization, but I just kind of want to like get that point across. Yeah. Um, 
on that aspect though i wouldn't say it's like totally a bad thing i'd mm-hmm. say it's more like props to apple for finding like a way that they could advertise and also a way that they can create their brand yeah to continue to get people to you know buy their product year after year because it's almost like you know there's some people that it's almost like i i have to buy the new iphone like they're, they 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 know a new one is coming and they almost prepare for it like apple's created like a cu- customer retention and connection to their product that has you know strengthened over time and continues to to hold true today so like um there's some there's some things like i agree with that you're saying but i wouldn't say it's complete man- manipulation on that aspect like i think there's some things that are just specific to the company and how it's been branding itself that it gets people to um to buy the product i think where things could arise which maybe is what you were trying to get at with the whole like, single camera thing um is maybe there might be some sort of false advertising you know yeah maybe not sp- maybe not apple specific but in general like with new products and new innovations like you know I, there, I am skeptical with a lot of things, thinking that maybe we aren't getting the full picture, we're not getting the full information, because, you know, technically maybe it's just the camera that was upgraded, but maybe they're telling you, hey, actually there's a new screen, there's a new new chip in your phone that makes it this much X times more powerful, but, like, that could all be a lie, like, maybe it's only, like, you know, one and a half times instead of three times, right, like, which yeah. is a big difference if you think about overall processing capacity, so... Um, there could be some of those things at play. Mm-hmm. And okay, so Apple's a great example for this. So, um, whenever you say like get an Apple phone or any type of app on the phone, you like you sign a privacy agreement. And I mean, I obviously don't read the whole fucking like privacy agreement. I just press I accept. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, most people do that. So then the question arises then. Um, well, I mean what are we accepting? Because we don't actually know. And like, if you actually want to know what you're accepting, no layman person's going to be able to understand the rhetoric in there. They have to go to their lawyer or their attorney to read it for them. And I think this is honestly a big question in terms of how these companies are able to get the amount of data that they have on us and also the sketchy data that they can also still get on us because we sign these privacy agreements. Yeah, that's a good point. And um, another thing also with that is like you said with Apple maybe misleading the public in terms of their upgrades they could be upgrading this phone to de- to uh, get more data on us that we don't actually know um, and they just say oh we just upgraded the phone but since we signed the privacy agreement on the phone we don't we can't actually do anything about the pro- the upgrade that they didn't tell us about um, so I mean that that's another instance that I feel like with these big corporations getting more power more data they're able to pretty much push us around more easily and mm-hmm. just kind of like use these smoke and mirrors to um, elude us to something that's actually um, much bigger than we can perceive. Yeah, I think the privacy agreement thing was actually really interesting that you brought up because if you, I've, I've only read a couple in my entire life, I think, and the amount of, you know, ones I've probably signed is 20 times more than that, so... Um, it's crazy that they could sneak language in there that you a might you know to the average person they might not even understand or b they don't even read it Mm -hmm. um but if you do sign it like technically like you know with everything everything that the company's most likely done on you know the legal aspect you know they might be in the right and that's something a lot they're they're allowed to do um but i almost think it's like it could be sort of like you know an abuse of power to mm-hmm. the aspect where these companies are able to write these things with um you know like legal teams versus you know the average person not might be able to um that also might come with maybe you know people are maybe it's they're they're, they're trustworthy you know the the the, um, the consumers are just extremely trustworthy towards the the brands and you know a company like you know a big company like apple for example is going to be very careful to not you know screw anyone over right they're going to be very careful that you know whatever agreement that they're signing is going to be upheld and there's going to be no like tricks in there but you know it it there's a there's a chance that you know other companies could use that to manipulate and so i do think you know to summarize here from what we both said there there needs to be i think a little more cooperation between big tech and the government and also there needs to be some privacy team or clause mm-hmm. um, put in somewhere. But 
this is a conversation we should definitely continue um, as the story develops. No, but. definitely. And I just want to add one more thing. I also yeah. think that down to your list, um, I just think general education in terms of like these new technologies coming up, yeah. um, understanding computer science in some type of way, and also just how um, these companies work in terms of gathering your data, so like looking more at the privacy agreements. I just think that will also help the general public as well. Yeah, I think that's that's very easy to almost implement. Yeah. So I think like putting a class in high school just maybe on, you know, tech data and security mm-hmm. could be very simple and could be a part of the curriculum for everybody. Definitely, and, yeah. You know, we, we could rule out some of this other stuff that's not needed, that's maybe almost old news, but replace it with like something that's going to drive society moving forward. So All right, but you know, we're out of time here um on the duo cast, but We'll catch you in the next episode, and we want to thank you for listening. Have a good one.